as I was telling, we're running two different accelerated programs, one for low-tech startups, mobile, web, and real, estate, real sector and social. The other is for very high-tech startups. How many startups have any sort of intellectual property here? OK, that's fair. Please find us afterwards. If you have any questions on IP-based startups, we've been doing this for a while. Um, today, something we did last year kind of worked. I'm assuming a lot of you are first-time entrepreneurs. This is either your second trial, one of after a failed project. So there might be very common things that you think, um, I want to tell you at least, that will stay at the back of your head. There are kind of top 10 things. You can make top five, top 20 lists, but I like this one a lot. So one of the things that we try to avoid, we try to mentor our startups, is to avoid at least the known mistakes so we can make better mistakes and you can make far greater learnings. Of course, in any case, if you're doing the first startup, you think you're doing the right thing, uh, you're attached to your idea, you love your product, and that's all you think. But you may be doing it wrong because you might think, and I'll pass this one, it's very common. That's my daughter, I love her. So you might think you know everything because you're vested a lot of time, you have a degree, you worked in a corporate that does the same thing for a lot of well. So you have this pre notion of, oh, I know this, and I know this very well. So that's, let's get past this part. But I sometimes think you should doubt what you think you know. So we'll do a small exercise, and that's the kind of time where you'll get off your chair and do something. So please pass the one post it for per person. I think, yeah, just pass the post its. And I want you to think while you're having your post its, to think of a bicycle. Please don't be smart asses and Google bicycle. Uh, you know a bicycle, right? Everybody knows what a bicycle is. Does anybody? have a problem with figuring out what a bicycle is? You think? Because you know, right? You know what a bicycle is, right? Of course. So everybody kind of got their post-its. And in the meantime, can you please draw me a bicycle? Very simple, just, just get it done. Just draw a bicycle for me and post it on the wall. Mentors included. Mentors also think they know their bicycles. So one simple bicycle, please. And just draw it and stick it on the wall. Don't be shy. Yeah, please. I use a term called hadi a lot. Turkish people understand it. And now you know a very good word. Hadi means come on. Get up. Bicycle. Draw a bicycle if you can, please. Stick, on the, stick it on the wall. Don't be sure you know what a bicycle is. You're great people. You're entrepreneurs. You think you know everything. OK. Your name? Majid. Majid. I'll spend some time with you especially. You, You're welcome. Like the first people who just jump in and do it. Hadi, 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 hadi. Any bicycle, I just, I don't care, just a bicycle, that's simple. Please, would you mind? Thank you. Hadi, 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 hadi. Yanis, you're building products that people will use. It's just a simple bicycle, Yanis. How hard that can be, right? Just a small tip. When you're sticking bicycles, please take a small look at the other people's bicycles. Don't laugh, it's a sensitive issue. UI, UX designers, don't think it's not usable. Just a simple bike, please. Don't draw it on your mobile app. You just want it on the wall. Just one bike. Simple. Bike. Hadi, 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 hadi. 3D printing is easier, right? Doing it on the bike. Sure, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Yes, of course, go ahead. Please just, and in the meantime, where you're stuck at that bottleneck, meet other people, say hi, look them in the face, do a firm handshake, 
And don't complain, we're not giving you enough time for networking. We do. Say hi to a few people. Say hi, it's a nice bike. Hi, my name is. Hi. Say hi. Hi, my name is Mohammed. Mohammed, nice meeting you. Nice meeting you, Mohammed. Nice meeting you too. Two people are smart. They came and met me. I like that. That's enough. That's, I'm not going to meet anybody else. Come on, it's a bike. Just a bike, right? All right. So you all have your bikes. All right? No, still not. All right, I'm going to give you another minute to put your bikes. Okay. Thank you. Meet other people when you're up. Nice. Nice. Don't worry, don't worry. They all will fail. Don't worry. We did this a lot. Just a bike. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Great perspective. That is cool. Nice. 1940s bikes. We always have it. Nice. Nice. Bikes that will never work. <laughs> That's also nice. Car looking bikes, bike looking cars. All right, all right. So take pictures, and you'll, have, you'll be having a lot of fun. All right, great. <coughs> so okay, now you can get seated. Thank you, you're meeting new people, that's also good, but we have a time to keep. So I'll keep on talking anyways. So how many of you think you got it right? How many of you think you got it right? All right, what does right mean for you? Two wheels, one rod, something to turn the wheels? A paddles, really? So it has, it has a purpose, right? It has to go. So would you be surprised to help me to do something? Come. And your name is? Perit. nice meeting you. Can you start counting how many bikes doesn't have anything that will make them go? Just start counting, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, eleven, twelve, <laughs> thirteen, and all these, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 20, 28, yes. Yeah. Our kind of average is like 70%. 70% of the bikes you thought are perfect does not have anything to let them go. It's just like they're stuck. They're just two wheels. That 70% has another function. Some of them have reversed. So they can't go forward. They go backwards. Some of them don't have wheels. There are always a few that are very, very unusual people that I like. And if they want to expose themselves, if they don't, I'm fine. So this one I like in particular because that's drawn from above. Unless this guy is building a drone, this is very unusual. Yeah? And somebody did a bike, not from the side, as most of you did, but from like a bird's view. Who did this? Thank you. Why? Well, OK. Now, this is the up view, so if, yeah, there might be an, yeah, there's an up view, that's also good. But this is, nor, this is not normal, and this is good not to be normal. But most of you think you know what a bike is, what a bike does, what a bike looks like. You all had a bikes. 70% of you fail to do this very basic task. So when you trust yourself so much that you know something very well, you want to build it, you may fail miserably. So don't fail by just thinking you know everything at best. You may not. Just have it at the back of your head. There is a balance between ego and self-confidence and ignorance. So I just kind of proved you. And take a look at the others as well. Most of them are not working. Such simple thing. What can you not do as well? So we all make mistakes. Don't worry about them. Just be sure that you can make mistakes. Another thing, you might think... This is a very personal thing with your team. This is fundamental 
task we get to our startups. Why are you doing this? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with your team? Why are you actually building a startup? You may think all of you have the same answer to this as a co-founding team, but not surprisingly, it doesn't happen that often. So you have to ask yourself, why are you doing this? All of you should be very much aware. If you're doing it just to be rich, if you're doing it just because it's your friend, if you're doing it just because you can build something better, and if you're just doing it because you're technically more capable of every other shit on the planet, and you can do the best hardware, you can do the best, you may be doing it for the wrong reasons. Proving something that proving that you can do something better does not mean you have to do it. Just live with the fact. You have something else you need to build for. That is falling away in love from your product. Don't love anything that's not going to love you back. Your product does not care about you. Trust me. Your coding really is insignificant to you or to everybody else. You attach a huge priority to your code, to your product, to your service. Don't do that, because it doesn't love you back. What loves you back? Customers, that's the only thing that will love you back, or hate. They're equally strong attachments. You may prefer hate being hated over being insignificant, by the way. If somebody hates you, that is good, because that means they told you that they hate you. Otherwise, you wouldn't know. So that's a strong attachment. You can Find that person and learn what not to do with that. Another part is, it really is not important at this age what your product is, but it matters what your product does for the people. So again, don't fall in love with your product. Building something nobody wants is the greatest sin of all. Don't do it. You'll burn in a different hell, believe me. Another part, you may not think this is important because you already have limited resources. You can bring anybody in the door because they're free labor. Even if they are free, be very careful for the first three people you put into the company, except for the co-founders. That's also important. But don't put people just because they're free. It may kill your environment. And with seven people, if half of the people are there for the wrong reason, the other half doesn't go the same place. Lack of focus, I love it when I see it. If you ever come to me and start telling, I have this idea and this idea, I have this market and this market, I have this business model and this business model, I, I want to slap you in the face. Please, even if you do, don't tell it to me. Because you'll be harshly criticized. You don't have enough resources, you don't have enough time, you don't have enough money. Wake up to that fact. Wake up. You can't run after every rabbit you see. The man who chases two rabbits will starve to death. He can't catch any. Find your focus. Find your customer market. It doesn't mean that you don't have a second plan. That's what we call alternative business models. Fine. Keep that in mind. But you have to focus on one customer market one product. Don't tell me you're building a hardware and the software, the hardware is going to go this and the software is going to go this. Don't do this. Pick. Your most difficult task is to say no. No to things that seem very promising because there will be a lot of stuff that will take you away from your focus. Another part, and we can discuss this forever, we have startups that we provide them guidance to stay in stealth. You know what a stealth is, right? You're building something, but you don't want to tell anybody. We usually have this, especially from first-time entrepreneurs. They don't want to tell what they're doing. In some cases, it may be necessary, especially if there's intellectual property attached to it. But in other cases, it's the worst thing you can do. You have to get as many feedback as possible. So there are many startup stories that became successful because they were in stealth, so they were not attacked by large players until they had enough traction, and until they have enough market exposure. But most of the time, you don't hear those stories because you, they remain in stealth forever. <laughs> they don't just appear because they're dead before they're born. Your job is to get the baby born. After that, it's a different hassle. But you can't grow a company unless it's alive. 
Money related issues, and there are lots of investors in the room, take your time to talk to them. There's always issues with raising money. This is the value of debt that everybody knows, and you're probably stuck somewhere around here for a while if you don't have enough angels or seed capital. This is also tricky, but also the startups die in this phase. And it's because they get too money too little, or too money too late, or too much money too early. Every combination is dangerous. Unfortunately, if you don't have your own funding, if you can't bootstrap your business, every combination can be deadly. And you will understand it much later. Especially when you think raising money at the first step is the best thing you can do. Sometimes it's not. There are, in entrepreneurship, there are always an exceptions. And you can object to me by giving 20 examples, and you're right. But I'm right as well, because we've seen the other examples. So you can't say there is this will work forever. There is no silver bullets in entrepreneurship. You have to build your own thing. But think, this is one of the critical moments in your startup. Another part, from the wrong type of people, angels vary between their potentials, between their interests, between their motivations. And angels vary amount, between the amount of time they will put on you. Don't take, and it's, I know it's very difficult, and in some in emerging countries, it is even more difficult. Like there is a planet called Silicon Valley. There are different rules that are in that planet. Just think there is less oxygen, more nitrogen. There's different animals that have adopted. Don't take, and I'm, I'm happy if uh, anybody from the States will disagree with me. The rules that you see, the stories that you read on TechCrunch and others is not comparable to your own environment. It will take a long time until you get there. In Turkey, in emerging markets, in Ukraine, yesterday we were giving some uh, mentorship to certain countries. It's always different. So you have to know the balance of angels, how to treat them, how to treat uh, investors, and we'll have a lot of discussions on this. But not any money is good money. Uh, there are good angels, and yes, there are very, very bad angels. Uh, we have seen cases where they try to take control of the company because they're the only game in town. They demand a lot of shares. They demand a lot of control. That they are still angel investors, not the same type of angel investors you heard or you read in reputable uh, TechCrunch or Atom's blogs. Um, again, too much money might create too much problems, you might not be able to grow enough, you might not have enough room to take other investors. This is all tricky stuff. And I will we'll do one-on-ones on this highly. Uh, vulture capitalists. Now, this is my favorite story I have to tell you, uh, because you're going to have a lot of um, uh, opinions. So you know Aesop stories, right? I mean, we grow up, all, every country has these Aesop stories. So one of the Aesop stories goes like this. So there's this grandfather and a grandson and the donkey. They're traveling from Levant to Besiktas, Levant to Taksim, which I think took ages for, for some of you. So they start their journey. Somebody comes from a distance and say, well, that's a donkey and you're walking next to the donkey. That's the donkey's role is to carry you. Why are you not on the donkey? And that makes sense, right? I mean, so the old man and the the grandson says, yeah, it makes sense. So get on the donkey. Another guy comes from a distance and says, like, shame on you. Yani, this donkey has so much capacity, and you're both on the donkey, and it's, it's a pity on the animal. Yani. Have some faith. So I say, yes, you're right. Sorry. We, we forgot. So the grandfather gets off the donkey. The grandson is still on the donkey. They keep walking. Another lady, old lady, comes and says, shame on you, you little punk. This old man is walking next to the donkey, and you're like seven, and you're on the donkey. Get off the donkey. And the old guy says, yeah, you're right. I'm really tired. So the guy, old guy gets on the donkey. The kid starts walking. Another guy comes and says, shame on you, little old man. This poor kid, this age, is walking, and you're suffering. Yeah, you're right as well. So they get off, and they, they don't know what to do. So they start carrying the donkey. Now that's the last thing they could be doing, right? So while crossing the bridge, something happens, it's unbalanced, and the donkey falls, and donkey dies. So the grandson and grandfather sits and looks at the dead donkey. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it's your freaking donkey. You decide what to do with it. Everybody will be right. Everybody that tells you a story, that gives you an advice, will be right. Much like this story. But it's not their donkey. It's yours. Oh, this mentor told me to do this. Why are you telling me this now? If I did this, I failed. I did this, I succeeded. Who cares? It's your donkey. At the end of the day, the advice you will take can be 180 degrees different. Bear with it. That's life. Your task is to define what advice you believe in. What advice, what type of things you will embed in your startup. And you can't blame anybody but yourself if you made the wrong decisions. That's tough. Welcome to life. You're building a startup. That's not easy. We, we cherish you. We trust you. We love you. But that's your startup. That's your donkey at the end of the day. And small task. Get this done. Not now, because Amal will start uh, giving you some little bit practical advice. Meet at least 10 people before lunch. One. Fix your value proposition statement today, before the pitches. And Amal will tell you what, that, what we mean by that. Those are the things you should do before lunch. Like we have two, three hours. It's easy. Fix your pitch. You have two sessions with mentors. Iterate fast. Make the changes and test with more people. Get your energy up. The really worst thing you can do when you step on, on the stage is go like this. Uh, thank you. Uh, very nice to meet you. Our startup is building this. And don't do this. If you keep your energy upper than your normal status, you will at least make a good impression. 50% of our first impressions will come from this. If you jump on the stage, if you tell this, if you look into me in the eye, I will listen. If not, I have my mobile. You're competing with my mobile phone for my attention. Don't lose that battle to a freaking smartphone. Because don't think that smartphone is smarter than you. Let's not make that same mistake. Be shy and go home. Perfect. No harm done. Be bold and be big. Ask. Demand. That's what you're born to do. We're here to help. Now I will let, give the floor to my co-founder of the Accelerator Programs. And we'll dive a little bit more on what the value proposition thing is, what the pitching. Um, just, if you're going to remember this, do this. I'll ask. If you come to me and ask, can I have your five minutes, I'll ask you. Did you meet 10 people? Did you fix your value proposition? Did you fix your pitch? If not, go do that first. Tough love. See you around.